Well, um, my brother, Bobby, got into officiating by his good friend, um, Gordon Pettis, and they remained good friends for many years, and that's exactly how he got started, was his friendship with him. Well, I think that Bobby would say that his most memorable event was probably the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 23 that he officiated in Miami, and uh, that was quite something to experience that and the, um, how the officials are treated during that, those times of the Super Bowl. And, of course, they also receive a Super Bowl ring. And so uh, I think that was most memorable to him and his wife and family. I think that he would say that his greatest achievement was the friends that he made, the relationships that he had. Uh, he has dear friends from the Southeastern Conference and the NFL that he had until he passed away. And they were very close and uh, endearing to him. And uh, he has achieved a lot, but he had a lot of help, as anybody that has been successful does. And I think that he never forgot where he came from, and he always remembered those that had helped him along the way, including Coach Bryant. I think the greatest reward that was given to Bobby uh, officiating besides the friends and the relationships that he had uh, was um, being in Berlin, Germany. Uh, he officiated a preseason game there in the same stadium where Hitler was in 1936, I believe it was, when uh, Jesse Owens was there during the Olympics and received a gold medal. And his wife, Joy, was able to accompany him there, and so that was quite an achievement for him to be there and for all of us who saw it. Who really helped him a lot in the beginning was Coach Bryant and Gordon Pettis, and then his, uh, his peers on the teams where he officiated, uh, Dale Hamner, Hammer, I think it is, um, uh, Dick Hantak, and uh, uh, I think it's Al McNally, who was with the NFL. So, uh, and, and the teams that he worked with, the, the officiating teams that he worked with, because they were, had to help each other. So that was a great impact, and they became lifelong friends. Well, Bobby's family has just been a mainstay through uh, his officiating career. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure that I said something about my sister-in-law, Joy, who wore out one of her cars driving him back and forth to the airport because you can imagine over those many years of officiating in the Southeastern Conference and then the NFL, um, we did without him during major holidays and events in our lives. And um, I will also tell you that one of his daughters got married in October once in uh, Gatlingburg. And so um, as soon as the wedding was over, some of the guys had to rush him off to the airport in Knoxville to go to officiate a, a pro football game. So. Uh, the family did without him, but we knew he was coming home, and we allowed him to live his dream and his life, and nobody complained. I think if Bobby could tell an official, and I think that he's told plenty, that if you make a call, own it. I think his son, uh, Rob, who is an SEC official and has been for a number of years, uh, stated that in a letter he wrote about his dad, um, that if you make a call, that's yours and pay no mind to the crowd or to the coaches or to the camera, the three C's, the coaches, the crowd, and the camera. Pay no mind to them. That's your call and you have to make it. I think that he would say that, just own it. If my brother were here, I think this would mean so much to him. He would be so honored as we all are in this family. Uh, he would love this, he would love seeing um, uh, the others that are going in, you know, with this class that were nominated, seeing his friends and seeing people that um, he had worked with. And uh, I th he would just be so happy and so pleased, and I wish he were here, and I wish he were here answering the questions and telling about his life. I'm happy to do this for him, but uh, I loved him, and we all did. And I'm happy that he's here, and I know that he knows that what we're doing, and it's a great thing, and thank you. I thank everyone involved with this.